What we do here is go back, 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 back. back. Alright, what's up everybody? So, I decided it's time to actually make the videos for the stencils. And today we're going to start off with the Rip Torn stencil. So I'm going to show you guys how the stencils come, what they're made out of, how thick they are, and then I'm going to show you a quick demonstration of how to use um, the stencils, um, in this case, like the Rip Torn stencil. Again, these are available, MikeSpress.com. If you're watching this on the website in the future, oh, excuse me, um, you know, obviously this is the video to go along with your stencil. So anyway, let's open this up and check it out on the inside. All right, guys. So when you order one of our stencils, it's going to come like this. And uh, I've decided to redo all these videos uh, just to properly show how our stencils come. So now... When you order our stencils, they will come in a nice plastic wrap, and they're meant. To, the plastic wrap is meant to be reused for storing your stencils, so you can easily just peel that that plastic off. You don't have to cut this, the wrapper off. Then you can easily remove your stencil, and now you could close this up. You can set it aside, and when you're done using your stencil, you could put it back in there. Um, pretty simple to explain. That. <clears throat> and with this particular stencil. And you get three different uh, shapes, right? So this is the shapes that you get here, roughly, right? And um, so the reason what's inspired this stencil in particular um, is in the past, I've been asked to paint stuff that's like on fire or that it looks like it's burnt on the edges or stuff that looks like it's shattered or just very, 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 varying variations of uh, something along those lines, looking like it's broken. Um, this also works good for making like marbleized effects. Sometimes those have like some cracks kind of going through. So depending on how you use your colors and what your intent is, these can be quite handy for that. So our stencils are made out of six mil mylar. So the back part of the the stencil here is actually the stencil, right? So we have a six mil mylar, it's all laser cut. And on this side, um, what I have liked to spray on in the past is paper stencils. And the reason is because they're kind of absorbent, right? So if you've ever used stencils in the past, especially plastic ones like this, like mylar, they get a buildup of paint. Um, and if you're using reduced paint, Sometimes that buildup can happen really quick. You're just trying to get a quick little effect in. You'll go to spray that edge and the buildup of the wetness will leave like a streak or a mark on your surface. So what I have found with the paper front here is that this kind of absorbs a little bit of that wetness. Now, obviously it's only up to a certain extent, but if you're working with reduced paints, um, this paper front does help a lot. Um, when it comes to just getting those nice edges in without getting a big, heavy, wet buildup around the edge of your stencil. So that's the reason for the paper. I know a lot of people have asked, what is the purpose of the paper? I had somebody say, but if you have a paper front, doesn't that defeat the purpose of the Mylar? Well, the Mylar is designed to not let any paint go through. It's also designed so that this stencil, as long as you don't like rip on it or anything like that, this will pretty much last you a lifetime, right? The paper, like I said, it's just for ease of use and for a nice spray pattern. And that's kind of what I like it. And it, yeah. So that's how this stencil comes. And um, now I have a quick little canvas here. We'll do a quick demonstration so you guys can see this stencil in action. So I'll, I'll go through this with all the stencils. Today we're going to do the Rip Torn stencil. And um, we'll go through all the stencils probably one every other day or so 
until we power through. So let me set this canvas up and we'll switch the camera. And I'll go ahead and say to, hi to everybody in the chat today. So what's up, Blue? What's up, Peter Brusco? What's up, Raul Antonio? What's up, James Melton with the Big Skull Squad? Yeah, 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 yeah. What's up? Um, <clears throat> what's up, Matt? Chris, Chrisak? The Chris Crizzle? What's up? And I think that's it, right? All right. So, yeah. <clears throat> and if you're watching this in the future, I am doing this video live so that um, you can kind of see how it works. <clears throat> so here I just have a regular canvas, right? Nothing on it. It's just white. And we're going to go ahead and throw some quick little designs on it just to show you guys what I mean. So obviously you've got a bunch of different edges here. But say you want to make this edge of the canvas here, like the, the edge of the canvas was burned up, right, or frayed up. I This this comes in handy for so much stuff. But the, the main point I'm going to illustrate today, just because it's easy to do with black, is to just make it look like this edge here was burned up, right? And so we're going to lay our stencil in and very quickly with some black, I'll show you guys what I mean. So I'm going to load up a little bit of black. What's up, Irby? How's it going? What's up, Michael McClung? How's it going? Up on the airline that's probably a good idea cool so I loaded up some black and this is pre-reduced already to 10% and again I'm just gonna take my edge here I'm just gonna look for a good edge maybe right there kind of where we had it earlier right and I'm just gonna come in with some black and make sure to hold my stencil nice and still you could always glue it down or use some magnets depending on what you're working on but all I'm going to do is just take this and just take that edge. Just bring a little bit of a fade down with some spotting. And bam, right? Your edge kind of has this little effect now. And I'll bring you guys in close so you can see. Right? And that's all that is. That's basically the simplest way to use this. And let's actually keep you guys in close and we'll go, keep going. <clears throat> and now I, there's some of these open spots. So say if you want to make it look like, oh, that, that part was burning, but then maybe some of the burned kind of just left some spotting. Kind of going this way, you can kind of take this in with a little bit of this. And just a little free hand work. But those nice little cracked edges, super simple way, right? And there you go. You got like a frayed up, burned up edge. Super simple. Now, I was also talking about doing marbleized effects. And this, most people would not look at these designs and think marbleized, right? Well, say if you had like a white marble pattern, like white, gray, something like that. Um... This edge is really busy, but we'll use a little bit of this. And I'm just going to use black, right? So I'm going to do it kind of going this way right here. And I'm just going to lightly hit that edge right there, right? See that light little poof? And then maybe we'll bring one this way over here. And we're going to bring in some lines. All you do is use those edges to kind of create those differences. Then if you do some little splattering, I have my little spatula here. Just 
probably not the best tool there you go right and then if you toned in with some other gray some whites and stuff you could get a really good effect of just some like nice rocky surface there without having to work too much at it right it just kind of gives it a nice cool look simple again it's all about your imagination but having these hard edges in the past i have found myself trying to like actually burn paper and like have it burn in cool ways and then trying to save it to use it as a stencil and whatnot um and that's what this kit is designed to, to solve right so now instead of carrying around some weird burned piece of paper i have a nice stencil set and it has enough variation throughout the whole kit that you can, it's really easy to get some cool effects so now let's actually uh, i think i got that um yeah let's, let's just create a nice black area next And I'm just gonna lay down some black here so that we could um, go on to the next exercise. And uh, I've been meaning to bring those videos for a while. And uh, I actually had this already kind of pre-recorded, right? But then when I went back and looked at the footage, uh, I realized I was still using one of the old stencils, the, just the straight up clear ones that we used to sell. And now with the, I, I feel like the paper is so underestimated, right? <laughs> like, um, uh, well, the, Spray adhesive wipe off the mylar easily if used. Um, I, 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 like, it's that whole thing where that spray adhesive, it's going to depend on which type of spray adhesive you're using. But the mylar, I mean, it is mylar, so it's pretty chemical resistant. Um, I wouldn't just leave it soaking in, in mineral spirits or something like that. But... Definitely, you can use it. I just, I, that's not something I've, I've done. So, typically, I don't like to use spray adhesive on these. Um, I like to just hold it in place. And if I have to stick it, I'll use a piece of tape or something like that. And I feel like that's the easiest way. Um, can you use this stencil like torn metal? Yes. So, that's kind of where I'm getting to next. Um, and we'll give this a second to dry. I can show you kind of a quick effect. And again, I'm just using black. Your surface is not always going to be black or white, but, you know, I'm sure with a little imagination, you'll get the point. And uh, so we want to use some of this. We're going to use a little bit of white, right, to obviously contrast on top of the black. And I've only done the half so that I could illustrate a point to you. Get that out of there. Rinse this out and a little, a little bit of white. So I felt like the best way to illustrate the point on these stencils is to actually just come and do a tent a demo panel like this and just you know the original video um i it was more like i had a, a piece of artwork already and then i just showed really quickly how to add it like a quick little background on it but i feel like this is a little bit more intensive and i could show you the actual different ways that you can use this way so it's not just it's not just one way one way fits all because it's not you could use this in, in so many different ways and probably you're you're watching me use it this way and you're already thinking like i could probably use that to make something else so um blue with the ten dollar donation thank you thank you blue um you're always the best 
Uh, what's up, Mike? Thanks for sharing. You know, you're very welcome. So I'm just loading up a little bit of white. Again, we're just trying to keep the colors simple just so I can show you guys a quick little way of using this. You see this bottom part? I'm going to kind of move the camera a little bit. <clears throat> so you see this bottom? Right here, this fade? Let me show you something, right? <laughs> so obviously this is just black and white, but I'm going to show you a quick little effect you could do. So we're actually going to use this coming off. So like, eh, we'll go something like this. That white's flowing through. Right. We got that nice little effect there, and then we'll keep going. So we just match this up to there. Wait, the other way. Kind of bring in some, some little highlights off of your edge here. And then we just hit that top little edge right there. And then I'm just going pretty quick. Of course, the black peels because we didn't let it dry, but <clears throat> you get. You know, the effect there of, I wish that black would have stayed. But you get the, the idea. You can kind of fold it over and then you can, actually, let me load up some black on a different one. Different airbrush. So I can show you guys the, the bottom shadow as well. that we use, which I think was this one. Right. And we'll just hit a little shadow right underneath. Right, boom. We'll to take another little edge over here. They don't always have to match up either. I kind of feel like when there's a little bit of a variation, it fits a little better. It fits a little better. Not too much though. You don't want to go too too abstract, but you do want it to match up a little bit. But bam, see now you got your folded over edge, and then you got your drop shadow for that edge. Right there. And that black is still bothering me. Here, we'll use this edge, just so I can show you. I kind of like it blasted through. Now the other way, let's say we go back to the white. Now say you want it to look like something blew a hole, or like a bullet hole type thing, but you want some cracks coming off. Right, obviously you, you probably already know to just kind of use your edges here. Right, so you got like that edge, bam. And you can kind of use some of this, and we're just going to kind of build a circle. All right, boom. Using it like that. Oof. We're going to kind of build a little bottom 
shadow right there. Bam. We come back in with the black. <clears throat> and um, again, there's some areas where there's really fine detail on there. So if you want to use some of that on the inside of that white. This, this is not where I loaded the black. Use a little bit of fine detail to just kind of build up some of the edges here. But then we can come in with just a nice little and there. And you got your bullet hole. Now there is some, like I said, there's some areas here where it's already kind of laid out for you. You could use that. But say like you want to build up some cracks off of that. Like maybe it hit on glass. Right, so like instead of just being a metal panel, like maybe it hit glass. <clears throat> and that's where this stencil really comes in handy because you can just take some of these edges here. And they're wild enough and random enough that right, and then you come in with some little freehand cracks going all over the place. Okay. Just come back with the black, reinforce our little hole there. there you go right so <laughs> pretty simple and they, hopefully that's pretty simple I don't know <laughs> it's as simple as I can make it So, um, yeah, and then from there, I mean, it's it's all going to be your imagination. So I like using um, a lot of these stencils are great for creating textures, right? So if you're into doing graphics, right, you know that you're always looking for a way to fill in those graphics, right? Even if all you're doing is just laying down lines. Like, yeah, you could just lay a color, but it always looks cool when you lay a color and then you have an effect writing along with it, right? So we take some black here and we just take maybe like some, some just some different approaches to this making sure to hit those edges if you just use your imagination scattered kind of look and if you do this with like metallics and stuff ooh bubbly ooh a bubbly when it plays in the light you're really gonna go bananas now if you're also doing like uh scene scapes and whatnot you could use these for possibly creating clouds if you look at this it already looks like some mountains right here like and i didn't that wasn't even my intent but just Again, by a little bit playing around with it, having these already pre-ready, pre-cut, um, I know in the they would have saved me a lot of time in my airbrush career, because um, like I said, a lot of times I had to cut out or try to burn some stuff, or if I saw something that was just torn, you know, in a, in a certain kind of way, you know, I would always pick it up and save it. And then when I would show up and paint somewhere, people would watch me bring this piece of plastic out that, you know, was all mangled. And they'd be like, what are you doing? And then 
you know, that looks, you know, piece of trash or something, and then I'd be spraying on it, and then the effect was cool, and that would always get people like, oh, yeah, I like that. But, you know, busting out that trash piece or whatever, um, always slightly unprofessional. <laughs> Which I don't mind. I, I just, you know, it's the reality of things. So there you go, guys. Uh, hopefully that demo kind of demonstrates for you the versatility of this particular stencil. And maybe the camera will focus. There you go. Um, like I said, a lot of it is going to come up to really your imagination, what your particular project is, and what colors. And like I said, if you're using metallics and stuff, you could create a lot of cool effects. Um, candy colors. Did I seen somebody say candy colors? Yeah. <clears throat> Using candies will create depth, yes, for sure. So, yeah. Like, when you're doing patterns, oh, man, like this, this, stuff like this is kind of where it's at. And I know that just from experience. And, yeah. So, hopefully you guys like today's demo. And like I said, you can put it back in its little container when you're done. And you'll have it ready for next time. The, um, you know. <laughs> Pretty simple. <clears throat> One person's trash is another person's inspiration. Yes, yes, that's usually how it goes. So, thank you guys again for all the support. If you're watching this video in the future and you have ordered yourself one of these stencils and you're just referring back to this video, I appreciate you and your purchase. Um, again, buying one of these stencils helps this channel keep bringing you more videos, um, better videos, and yeah. So hopefully you guys enjoy this video. Like I said, I'm going to be doing one of these and we're going to try to hit them, you know, one every other day or something. I do have some other videos going to be kind of mixed up in between, but all the live feeds, we're going to probably come back Tuesday since today's Sunday and we'll do one of the stencils and we're going to kind of go through them all. So hopefully you guys enjoy this video. If you're on the website and you're ordering one of these, make sure you subscribe, make sure you hit that like button as always, and we'll see you guys in the next one. Later, later, everybody.